video is brought to you by BetUS. Use promo code ICEMAN. You're going to get 125% deposit bonus matching your initial deposit. All the other promo codes on their website is a split between casino and sports. If you use promo code ICEMAN, that's 125%. All sports only available in US, Canada, and Europe. So we got the UFC Blades versus Aspinall going down next week. We're going to get into some predictions. Uh, Before we do, damn, that was a bad UFC uh, last card. Yeah, I guess good if you took the underdogs. A lot of underdogs uh, pulled through. Uh, Some surprising ones. If you guys uh, seen our bet, uh, bet uh, Kusain Askabov and Salikov. They were going to be my ice picks. However, um, Kusain Askibov, thankfully, luckily for me, pulled out of the fight and my bet was void and I was able to get my money back, uh, fortunately, because Salikov got knocked the fuck out. He looked bad and Jingling Ling looked like he was in really good shape, probably the best shape I've seen him in. Then goes to the main event. I didn't even bet the main event. Um, but dude, Brian Ortega quit. I don't care what anyone says. If you got to be willing to go in there and die, dude, and Brian Ortega quit. I've seen fighters with 10 times worse injuries than a dislocated shoulder continue to fight. Like Conor McGregor got his knee blown out. Uh, Tiago Santos got both of his knees blown out. Glover Teixeira. Got his shoulder, whatever, popped in against the John Jones fight. John Jones hyperextended his arm and blew out his knees with one of his fights. The list goes on and on of how many fighters who's fought through injuries. Like, yeah, you're going to get injured. It's it's the UFC. You're in a fight. I mean, he's seen it with Pedro Munoz. It's just he wanted out. He wanted out, and he figured out a way to do that. Maybe he's like only like, hey, I got two more fights left on my contract. Maybe I fake this one, get paid, and go on to the next one and maybe get a new deal, whatever. I don't know what's going on in this head, but the fact that he stepped back for, you know, he went back for a heel hook or something after being put in a, you know, arm bar, pulled the arm out. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but uh, I think Brian Ortega quit, and that's that's my opinion. You guys can have your opinions, but. Looking back at the fight, I think Brian Ortega just wanted a way out. And uh, he got it. He sure got it. I can't stand that guy anyways. I don't see him uh, getting a UFC main event after that. So let's get into the Curtis Blades-Tom Aspinall fight. Let's start in the beginning. So I know you guys want the predictions for the whole card, even though I don't bet the whole card. And if you do bet the whole card, then you are probably an idiot. Let's see. Nicholas Dalby versus Claudio Silva. Claudio Silva is like, what, 40 years old now? This guy's still fighting. Dalby, he came into the UFC on a pretty good um, good run. He had like, yeah, I think it was seven fights in a row. Yeah, seven or something like that, six or seven. He had a couple, uh, no contest, but then his last fight, uh, he lost to Tim Means, which, you know, didn't wasn't impressive at all. However, Claudio Silva is just looking really bad coming off two straight losses to Court McGee, James Kraus. He's getting older in age. I mean, he's got the jujitsu skills. He's got a good jujitsu background, but I mean, I think he's just too old. Dalby's probably going to be able to keep it on his feet. So I'm going to go with Nicholas Dalby on this one. He is a huge favorite. Next, Jai Herbert, Kai, Kyle Nelson. So I'm going with Jai Herbert on this one, and I'll tell you why. Kyle Nelson, he's won one fight in his last four fights. So three losses in his last four fights. And he's taking on Jai Herbert. Jai Herbert, obviously, coming off a vicious knockout loss. However, I was super, super impressed. 
with that fight. Um, he almost knocked Taporia out, dude. He had Taporia rocked before he got knocked out. So I was super impressed with Jai Herbert. And I think, uh, you know, losing three out of four fights and you're only that one win coming to Polo Reyes, who's like 10 and eight or something. I think Jai Herbert should, uh, should easily run through Kyle Nelson. Now, my boy, Muhammad Makayev. Thank God this guy's on the fight. We need more fighters like this guy. Uh, this guy's, he's the guy to watch right now at flyweight. I see him being a possible future champ down the road. Everyone knows how high I've been on Muhammad Makayev. Started fighting, I think, MMA professionally at like 14 years old. Now he's getting some questions. Should I take Muhammad Makayev to win by finish? And... You know, flyweight division, the finishes is a little harder to come by, even though I think Muhammad should get the finish. However, Charles Johnson, tough dude who's never been finished. So I might stay away from that one, but I think Muhammad Makayev should run away with this one pretty easily. So as the odds makers think too. So up next in the featherweight division, Maquan Emir Khani versus Jonathan Pierce. This is going to be very interesting. Maquan Emir Khani was coming off three straight losses, but his last fight, he looked good. Came out and just anaconda choke Mike Grundy, put him to sleep. And I was super impressed. But before that, he got knocked out by Lerone Murphy, which, you know, no shame in that. Lerone's undefeated. Who knows what his ceiling is as of right now and he's taking on Jonathan Pierce now Jonathan Pierce is coming off three straight wins and before that he lost to Joe Lozon which was three years ago and you know he hasn't been too active he's got one fight in 2020 one fight in 2021 and one fight in 2022 so this is going to be a second fight of 2022 and he's taking on Maquan Amir Khani. Yeah, this is gonna be uh, that's gonna be an interesting one. They got Jonathan Pierce at a huge favorite minus two thirty. I don't know if I agree with that one. I think. Uh, I was going to take the over in this fight. However, these guys do got a lot of finishes. I don't want to bet against Maquan Amir Khani. I mean, I think he's really good. But he sometimes he's off. Um, this is, this is going to be interesting. But I'm going to give you a prediction. So everyone thinks Jonathan Pierce is going to win, considering he's minus 230. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with the over on this one. I'm going to go over over two and a half on that one. But that one's tough. Next, we got Nathaniel Wood versus Charles Rosa. Charles Boston Strong Rosa has got three losses in his last four fights, you know, coming to TJ Brown, Damon Jackson, Damon Minner, and the one he did win was against Justin James. Now he's taken on Nathaniel Wood, who, el who is also coming off a loss to Casey Kenny, decision loss, hasn't fought in two years. So this was a guy the UFC was pretty high on coming up. And so he hasn't fought in two years. I don't think they're going to give him a tough fight back. They're going to give him a bit of a tune-up fight. And I think this is a perfect matchup for Nathaniel Wood. I think Nathaniel Wood is going to beat Charles Rosa everywhere. Bad matchup. He's just a much better striker and probably better on the ground as well. So I'm going Nathaniel Wood all day. Up next in the lightweight division, we got Mark Casey, the bone crusher, a guy who had a lot of hype coming in when he came to the UFC, uh, when he was undefeated, but then um, just hasn't looked too good against uh, 
some of these top guys. He's but he's fought some really good guys like Dan Hooker and Drakkar Close, Nazrat Hackprast. Beat Lando Venata and but and you know he also lost to Fiziev, which was a crazy fight. Uh, Fiziev, known for those matrix like dodging those kicks, I was against Mark Jacasey. Uh, I'm gonna go with Mark Jacasey on this one. I think uh, Demir Hadzovic, he's good, but I wasn't too impressed with him. Like he. He lost to that Christos Giagos dude, so I, when he lost to that guy, I was like, oh, okay, this guy's not too great. Then he got choked out by Moicano, but he did beat Yancey Medeiros his last fight, which was pretty impressive, and that sent Yancey out the door. But then Yancey came out in Bellator and you know beat Emmanuel Sanchez, but that is Bellator. So I'm going to go with Mark Jacasey on this one. Fighting in England as well, I mean, I think I'm going to go with the hometown favorite, Mark Jacasey. But I'm surprised to see him at minus 300. That is pretty... Next, we got the Bear Jew versus Vulcan Uzdemir. Now, this is impressive. Um, This is very interesting because I think... The Bear Jew, Paul Craig, has got like five straight wins, all submissions, and he's an underdog. So what does that tell me? They think Vulcan Ozdemir is going to be smart enough to stay away from the guard of Paul Craig. Paul Craig doesn't have the best takedowns, but he will pull guard. He's one of the only guys in MMA who's actually successful at pulling guard, which is crazy, especially at light heavyweight. You don't see many people pulling guard. And against a guy like Vulcan Uzdemir, I think Uzdemir is a striker. I don't think he's going to play that game like Krylov did. Krylov, Ankalaev, when they got caught, they were playing in the lion's den with Paul Craig. They were in his guard, keeping top position, not thinking they're in any danger, landing some strikes, and then Paul Craig locked up that crazy, crazy triangle he always gets, and he's known for it. Is he going to be able to do it again? I mean, that's the thing. I don't know. Like, he doesn't... If he pulls guard and Vulcan owes Demir smart and is able to disengage, get the ref to stand him up, and then keep the fight on the feet, Vulcan can win by KO. I think Vulcan owes Demir is the better striker than Paul Craig, and Paul Craig's got way better jiu-jitsu. However, who am I taking? And I am going to go with the under two and a half on this one. Under two and a half rounds. I think uh, someone's getting finished in this fight, and it's going to go under two and a half. And I'm also very surprised Paul Craig is plus 125, considering he's you know on a huge win streak, beating some good guys. And look, Krylov is actually fighting ahead of Paul Craig. Paul Craig's first fight on the main card and cry loves and he lost to Paul Craig, but he's fighting later on in the card. That's doesn't make really sense to me, but it is what it is. I guess maybe because he's fighting a bigger name in Alexander Gustafsson who hasn't won a fight. I think since 2017 Krylov, on the other hand, hasn't won a fight. <sighs> since 2020 against Johnny Walker and he's got one win in his last four fights. He lost to Paul Craig, lost to Ankalaev, no shame there. And he lost to Johnny Walker or he, sorry, he beat Johnny Walker, lost to Glover Teixeira. And he also lost to Jan Blackowitz and Alexander Gustafsson also hasn't won a fight since 2017 when he knocked out Glover Teixeira in fifth round, I believe. In his last fight, he fought Verdum at heavyweight, got armbarred very quickly. Yeah, this is... uh, I don't know about this one. I'm probably leaning towards uh, Krylov on this one. Just because Gustafsson's been out so long, and I don't know how he's going to look. And he hasn't won since 2017. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm leaning towards Krylov. But, man, if this was the old Gustafsson, 
the one that fought John Jones in DC, I would go all day Gustafson, but I think Gustafson's time is over now. Next, we got Patty the Batty Pimblet. One of the guys with uh, the bigger names on the roster. Pretty famous right now. Got that big hype train behind him. Similar to like a Sean O'Malley, but like an English version. He's coming off four straight wins over, you know, subpar opponents. And now he's fighting probably his toughest opponent in Jordan Levitt. Jordan Levitt's got pretty good jiu-jitsu skills. Uh, pretty good jiu-jitsu skills. But so does Patty Pimblett. Yeah, this is... Uh, I think I'm going to go with Patty the Batty Pimblett. I think UFC is going to want to see him win. I think they just signed him to a new deal. It just makes sense for Patty the Batty to win. I think they're going to match him up against the right people. And Jordan Levitt being that person... I think Patty should walk away with this one. I think he's better on the ground, and I think he's got the better stand-up than Jordan Levitt. So I'm going with Patty the Batty, and it's in England. So if it goes to the decision, they might give it to Patty the Batty, even if it's a close fight. Next, Jack the Joker Hermanson takes on Chris Curtis, who's just coming off a win over Adolfo Vieira, staying active. Jack the Joker Hermanson, however, is coming off a loss to Sean Strickland, split decision loss, and before that he beat Edmund Shabazian by decision and lost to Marvin Vittori before that. Now, is he going to be able to get the fight to the ground? I think Chris Curtis has the better striking, and I think Jack Hermanson is the better jiu-jitsu guy. Mm -hmm. Seeing Chris Curtis's last fight and how good his takedown defense looked, it was pretty incredible that he was able to stuff all of Adolfo's takedowns. I'm leaning towards Chris Curtis on this one. If he can sprawl and brawl, I think he's got some heavy hands, and I think Chris Curtis should walk away with this one. So I'm going with Chris Curtis on this one. If he gets this win, he's he's right in there in the top 10 now. Because Jack Hermanson's up there in the top 10, I believe. Now in the main event of the evening, Tom Aspinall takes on Curtis Razor Blades. Curtis Blades' only losses are to, you know, top guys, Naganu twice. And I know he got caught with that uppercut to Derek Lewis. And then after that, he won a decision to Rosenstrike and, you know, knocked out Dawkins his last fight. However, Tom Aspinall might be that different beast, that heavyweight that uh, the UFC definitely needs a guy like Tom Aspinall. And Tom Aspinall is coming off quite the win streak. I believe he's, you know, got eight wins in a row or something. And he hasn't lost since 2016, so six years undefeated. And he's looking good. His last fight, he dominated Volkov. Just took him down in the first round. Straight arm locked him. However, he's not going to be able to take down Curtis Blades. If he does take down Curtis Blades, I will be in shock. Because Curtis Blades is some wicked wrestling. So, in my opinion, Curtis Blades is going to have a hard time taking Tom Aspinall down as well. Because Tom Aspinall has got some good jiu-jitsu skills. And I think he's got some good takedown defense. And I don't know if Curtis Blades wants to play that top game with a guy as dangerous as Tom Aspinall on the ground. So I think this is going to be a stand-up match. And I'm going with the underdog on this one, Tom Aspinall. I think Tom Aspinall, he's going to be able to keep it on his feet. And I think he is the better striker than Curtis Blades. Curtis Blades is a good striker. However, Tom Aspinall has got some fast hands and the chin. I think Curtis Blades has a... Uh, weaker chin, so to speak. He's got it's got it cracked a few times. He got knocked out three times, I believe. And Aspinall, if he's able to find Curtis Blades' chin, I think he can win. So I'm going with underdog Tom Aspinall. I know on here he says Tom Aspinall minus 135, but I just checked my gambling website and Tom Aspinall is a slight underdog. But pretty much even odd, so there it's pretty much a pick 'em. So I'm I'm leaning towards Aspinall in England. I think he can get it done. So those are your picks for 
UFC Tom As or Blades vs. Aspinall. If you guys want to know who I'm betting on, I've only made one bet so far, and that is a three-play parlay with Muhammad Makayev. Jai Herbert and your Muhammad Makayev, Jai Herbert and your boy Nathaniel Wood. And it's a three play parlay. If you parlay those three, you will double your money. So $100 wins you, I believe, $99. So double your money. I'm taking it. Uh, if I see some better method of victories, I'll maybe post something during the week or something. But as of right now, that's the only bet I've placed. Hopefully no one pulls out and it's I don't have to get it voided, but three play parlay, it's looking good. Out.